all right hello everyone and peace of christ all of you i hope my voice came in good and clear i apologize you know uh, we started a podcast uh, about an hour ago and we lost the internet i hope will not happen again uh, there's nothing i can do about this one i mean it's an internet uh, the company uh, internet drop uh, anyway we continue and uh, you know i hope that the muslims who they are listening uh, they will share with us their ideas and what they think in front of me, I have a picture of the Kaaba. I mean, this is the Holy Kaaba swimming in the mud of the sewage. And yet the Muslim, they claim that this is the most holy place and the location cho chosen by Allah. I mean, it's a chosen by Allah it's in the, and it's in the worst location in the world. So what if it's not a chosen by Allah? I mean, imagine you are a person who hire an engineer and this location is chose by an engineer and this engineer he put your house where the poop and the sewage will cover it and yet this is a holy place actually the quran says that the kaaba is a holy ground and christians and jews and uh, buddhas and uh, atheists and all, anyone who don't believe in allah they are any clean, they are filthy, dirty, najis. Najis is not just any clean, it means like nothing can clean you. You are really filthy. So, because you are any clean, you cannot enter that holy ground. But poopoo can cover it. I mean, you cannot, but poopoo is okay. You see, when the Quran says that those who they are not Muslims are any clean and they are filthy, dirty, and then we find this picture, as you see in the screen, how the Kaaba is flooded and covered by dirt. So, why Allah, the one who is supposedly choose the location, did not stop the flood from covering his Kaaba? Why Allah don't use his fingertips to lift up the ground of the Kaaba? I mean, it's very easy. You see the Himalaya mountains, they are growing mountains, which means they are not really fixed. The, the size of it is, is growing because the magma in the ground keep pushing up. For sure, it's slowly happening, but the height of the mountain is increasing, not decreasing. So all Allah, what Allah need to do, just lift up the ground under the Kaaba and you can do it. And yes, Allah have a fingertips, you know. And the funny, uh, uh, the Muhammadan in their videos trying to refute me. They say Christian prince, he says Allah, he have a, a body part. The, all Muslims agree that it's not true. I mean, look at the idiots. You just go search in the in YouTube. Type Allah hand, type Allah foot, type Allah, and and you say all the Muslims agree Allah have nobody. You, you, you know you are you are the most funny scam ever. And you think that people will believe what you say? So, if you look with me at this Kaaba, this is a clear proof actually that Allah is a false God and Muhammad is a false prophet. And remember, this is a picture taken after we start having cameras. So, you know, and then after they have their oil, they start asking American companies to solve the problem. How we can stop the flood from coming to the Kaaba? Which means this Kaaba was flooded for centuries after centuries after centuries. And Allah did not do it, but the American engineering can do it. You believe it? The God of the Kaaba cannot do it. All those thousands of years, we have Islam already is more than a thousand or four hundred years. And the Kaaba was exist long before Muhammad. There was 26 Kaaba in the Arabian Peninsula. It's a pagan place for worship and buying and setting. And as you see, this is the Kaaba. You see, actually, if you see the Kaaba, the old Kaaba, the, the old Kaaba was nothing really, but this, now what you see in TV is the money of the oil, marble, you know, lighting, uh, even air conditioning, you know. But you see, it doesn't matter how much money you spend on it. They spend on it because they make money from it. Every year, a lot of people go there and visit and they spend a lot of money for airline. You see the Saudi government, they make money from even your visit, just from the airline. You have to rent a hotel, you have to buy food, 
you have to uh, uh, to buy gifts to go, go home as a memory from the Kaaba, something like a rosary, something in your hand to give it to your friends. So it's a big business, big business. Uh, why on a Friday prayer is only for male, no female allow? Well, not only Friday, all the Friday, all the prayer is only for that. But you know, some mosque, what they do, they separate the mosque between male and female. You know, but the you know, uh, because Islam supposedly, you see, this is telling you that those are not really believers because if a woman enter a mosque and she is in the house of god and there is thousands of people there i mean what is your worry the worry is that we muslims we are not decent people who can you know be decent inside even the mosque so you cannot trust a muslim man with a muslim woman this is about trust you cannot trust and now you forbid them from coming to the mosque okay what is about the rest of the week i mean uh, I mean, if somebody want to do something bad, they would do something bad, but they would not do it in the mosque. Anyway, uh, as you see the title, Allah Aka Muhammad and his amazing ethic. From the amazing ethic of Allah that there's a black stone in the shape of a vagina and a Muslim, you have to kiss it. And the funny, a Muslim will say to you, it, uh, no, we don't have to kiss it. No, you have to kiss it. This is what Sunnah means. Sunnah is following the steps of the Prophet. And the Prophet kiss it, so you kiss it. Actually, Umar al Khattab he said, If not Muhammad kissed you, I will not kiss you. I know that you are useless and harmless. This is Umar al Khattab saying it clearly and getting Muhammad busted, by the way. Because when he said this statement, he proved that Muhammad is a fraud. Why? Look what Umar he said. Umar came near the black stone and kissed it and said, No doubt, I know that you are a stone and can neither benefit anyone or nor harm anyone. Had I not seen Allah Apostle kissing you, I would not have kissed you. Do you understand how dangerous this statement is? Do you guys understand how dangerous Muhammad is 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 being spanked by Umar al-Khattab because what Umar is saying there's no need to do that this is stupid this is literally stupid you are useless and you are harmless so why we want to kiss you but because Muhammad he kissed you we are kissing you and this is not only proving that this stone is a fraud Proving Muhammad is a fraud. Why? Because Muhammad, he said that the stone, the black stone, is the right hand of Allah and is going to witness for Muslims in the judgment day. But look, Omar is saying, you are useless. Did he say useless? Yes, he said that. There is no benefit from you. No benefit and no harm. But Muhammad said something different. If we go in the, in the different hadith, we will find this. <clears throat> so one of them have to be a liar uh, either Omar or Muhammad and here in this case I believe Muhammad is the fraud let me instead of see the hadith um Sorry, guys, I cannot read your text when I am typing. Wait for me. Yes, Tadimahu, Yom al I'm trying just to find the hadith. Let us see if we can find it. Here we go. This is Muhammad saying this following statement. And the Muslim cannot say this is da'if as usual. And by the way, what they say here, Hassan, which means good, uh, it's a stupid statement because this is a book which is supposedly a sahih book. What do you mean, Hassan? So anyway, I heard Ibn Abbas says that the Messenger of Allah said, this stone will be brought in the day of resurrection and it will be given two eyes with which 
to see. Which, what, to see. This is not metaphorical. This is not metaphorical. It's going to be given eyes, literally eyes, which is going to see. And a tongue, which to speak. And it will, it will bear witness for those who touch it in sincerity. But isn't it Muhammad, isn't it Umar al-Khattab, he just said that you are a black stone, you are useless, you are harmless. Right? Okay, we'll zoom. I don't know. Let us see if my, okay. I think now you can see it better. See, but Umar, he said that this stone is useless, harmless. So which one is telling the truth? Okay, guys, we did Zoom. We did Zoom. It take time for you to, uh, to receive the Zoom out. <clears throat> so, Omar, no Muslim can attack him, especially if you are a Sunni. The Shia, they spank him every day. They call him a dog, filthy, monkey, dog, whatever, uh, fraud, you name it. Uh... So Omar is saying clearly that this stone is used. This Muhammad is making a clearly statement saying the stone speak, talk, and see. Different hadith it says that the black stone is the right hand of Allah and whoever kiss it, like you know, which is meaning like uh, kissing the hand of Allah. So how this is can be ethical that there is a God he order us to kiss a black stone in the shape of a private part claiming that this private part is going to witness for us in the day of judgment and what is witnessing mean i mean what do you mean the black stone so do allah need the witnesses what is that so this is not metaphorical this is literally happening muslim today they kiss the black stone which is nothing but the private black stone which is the, for the God of fertility. And by the way, what is left from it is not only, there's no stones there actually. The whole shape you see, if we go right now, let me, let me find the black stone image. There is nothing left really of this stone. What is left there is just little tiny rocks in the size of your fingertip. And they place it inside the wax. Every week they have to do maintenance for it. <laughs> the funny that they have to do maintenance to the stone of Allah. Allah cannot do maintenance to his stone. Allah could not preserve his stone. You know? <clears throat> uh, let us see if we can show you. Here we go. This is how they are fixing the black stone. I will put it for you on the screen. Give me a second. They do waxing. Here we go. They do waxing for the stone. You know. And this waxing supposedly is uh, because the whole stone is wax. There's nothing left. There's only small tiny rocks inside the wax. And this is what is left of the black stone. Actually, there, there is videos. There's videos in YouTube, you can search it, about doing maintenance to the black stone. So, look at this. This is a stone is going to witness for you in the judgment day. But the stone itself is not going to exist until judgment day because nothing, nothing left of it. Do you see the stupidity? This stone cannot even survive. And we need to do maintenance for and what is left of the stone is this here we go you see this is the rest is wax you see it do you see it this is what the black stone is what is the black stone and actually if you look you will notice that those stones are not from the same rock which means there is a cheat in here do you notice that there is some stones they are whiter than the other stones where is the black stone so the ethic of Muhammad to make us kiss a private part of a woman and the tafsir, not me, you see the Muslim, they might say, where is it? I can show you the tafsir where it says that the black stone became black because of the sin of mankind 
because women they used to touch their hand and they're full of blood and they put it inside the black stone asking Allah the God of fertility to make them have a child because women at that time they believe the reason they don't have babies because they commit sin so they go to the black stone they place their hand in their private part when they have their period because now they they want the period to stop so they can have a baby so they put their hand in their private part when they have their period and they go around the Kaaba naked is that true absolutely if we go to the hadith we will find the following totally naked and then you need to ask yourself what was the religion really practiced in this Kaaba because why people they are going naked around the house which is the house of Allah regardless who is the you know one doing that they believe in Allah you see when the Muslim they say the Quraysh the tribe of Muhammad they are mushrikeen mushrikeen mean they associate gods with Allah but the the main God is Allah so what was the religion which is the main God of it is Allah making people practice such a thing going naked around the Kaaba Hmm. I think my connection is good and there's no problem. No, I think here the location I am in, when too many people use the same, uh, I mean, it's like a peak time. Today is a Friday evening and too many people using the internet. And then the speed it drops suddenly. I hope that will not happen again now. So, obviously the practice telling you that there is something wrong in this religion those who they are doing this nakedness thing they are believers in allah they are not believers in something else you see when the muslim they say muhammad was fighting his tribe still the tribe he is fighting they believe in allah they are not believing in different god so what was the religion really which is believing in allah making people going around the kaaba naked Hmm? what makes Muslims believe Islam is a beautiful religion after hearing you teaching yeah, you know like you see uh, most of Muslims when you speak against Islam exposing it they go in denial you know if you watch the videos Muslim trying to refute me I mean they ignore what I said and they speak about something that is not there as an example uh, uh, you know they, they try to refute me uh, about uh, uh, as an example Paul Paul they say CP here it doesn't say this is Paul here they are quoting the Christian saying that no the Christian doesn't say that secondly why even the name of Paul there this is Quran this is the book of Muhammad and this is interpretation of the Quran so why you insert a story about Paul if Paul is not what who he the diverse meant about it so they ignore answering the question until now we are asking who are the three messengers they do not know this is the main question if it's not Paul it's who they'll have no answer so Islam is a stupid cult copy paste and Muhammad he have no idea what he's talking about and if you ask and you read the interpretation of those stories you will find that those messengers they are messengers of Christ who went to the city of Antioch now we knew who they are those who went to Antioch this is the first city who accepted Christ so when they try to refute you they say stupid things and they speak about everything except the topic because they try to make it about me you know what I mean Muslims they don't debate me they debate debate about me they have no answer so they try to make it personal they try to make it like they put you down call your names uh, liar you know lie number one lie number two lie number three uh, will call me and show me the lies why well, you don't call me I mean this will be hilarious if you have all those lies why you don't call me and let, let, let it make this make it official let us see what how CP will will lose his tongue he cannot answer you now like he will be shocked like wow and everybody will see that he's a liar but you didn't they don't dare to call me And this is the whole point. And now what we are talking about, they will go and make a video says, CP, 
those are not the Muslims going around the Kaaba my friend at that time the Kaaba you see when Muhammad supposedly forbid doing a going going around the Kaaba naked the Kaaba is already under his control for a long time why he was waiting why Allah did not make a verse in the Quran look the Quran have a verses about who who Muhammad can sleep with or verses Muslims don't enter the house of the Prophet without uh, permission like what this is a this is a verse this is God is talking don't enter the house of the Prophet without permission so he have time to make a verse about don't enter the house of the Prophet and don't eat his food and don't eat his sandwiches but he have no time to say don't go around the Kaaba naked It's not about brainwash it's about you know most of Muslims they think this is their identity so the second you start exposing it he feel like he is he is the one is under attack it's not a religion they take it in a personal way they are very naive and those who defend they are doing business they have no answer they cannot debate us and you know the proof is here is every day Uh, refute the army story is real but my friend how, how how an army of elephant is going to pass all the way to Mecca but just to show you how stupid this story is I mean Muhammad is an officially an idiot this guy he heard legends and the, you know and yeah if we go to the verses about the elephant chapter 105 it's a very chapter, very small, tiny chapter, very funny. I mean, shouldn't you tell us what happened? I mean, what the, what kind of God he's saying to us? The whole chapter is five verses. If we count them, they are not even maybe 30 words. Don't you see what Allah he did to the people of the elephant? No, we did not see. Did you? Did Muhammad even see? No, because supposedly this happened before Muhammad. So how you say, didn't you see? I mean, even the statement is stupid. Didn't you see? Who is the one who saw that? Muhammad did not see it himself. Who is the one who saw it? <laughs> and what happened? No, we did not see. Tell us, please. There's an army and they are coming with the elephant and Allah, he sent the bird carrying stones. Like what? What is that? So Allah, he defend his Kaaba by flying birds who carry stones and they throw it in the elephant. So why the Saudi are buying the F-16? I mean, here we go. Why Saudi, they have more than 8,000 American soldiers right now as we speak in Saudi Arabia. Why they are asking the American to fly with their awaks on the top of, the, of Mecca? You have the birds, my friend. And not only that, there is a story. Actually, the Kaaba was destroyed many times after Muhammad. So the story here, not only stupid, the story is getting busted by itself, by the history of Islam. Uh, uh, Al-Hajjaj, he destroyed the Kaaba. Uh, there, there is many, many, many names, but the most, most uh, famous one is Al-Qurmuti. Al-Qurmuti, who destroyed the Kaaba and he took the black stone, and he made it a stone for his own business like bathroom for more than 20 years and not only that al qurmati when he destroyed the kaaba and the muslim now they will say me they say to me uh, it's a black stone why allah will defend it well here we go don't you see the kaaba was defended by allah he sent an army of birds and here remember this is the kaaba where people they go around it naked at that time you know what I mean? So Allah protect the Kaaba when people go naked around it, but Allah don't protect the Kaaba when people are not going naked. <laughs> you know what I mean? So when the Kaaba became clean from the idols, supposedly, the Kaaba have only Muslims around it. Allah don't send his bird to protect the Kaaba. al qurmuti he come. He destroyed the Kaaba. He took the black stone. In the top of that, he stood in the middle of the Kaaba, in the top of the ruin, 
and he said hey Allah where is your black where is your birds where is your birds there's videos in YouTube the sheikhs are explaining it the guy was challenging Allah says where is your birds which means you are a fraud after al qurmuti he destroyed the Kaaba Islam demolished a lot of Muslims left Islam because they noticed that this is really not a fraud where is Allah where is the birds people were waiting for something to happen the sky will have birds right now no birds no snakes no cockroaches no ants nothing so Muhammad he bring a fraud not only is a fraud he will bring all of Rod's stories and he adopted any story heard before him Muhammad he take it he adopt it and he teach it right <clears throat> uh, when I lost my internet we were reading about Muhammad advising a man not to marry a woman she is widow or previously married to marry a child hmm? muhammad the filthy man and i say that word without hesitation because imagine imagine if you are a muslim listening uh, your sister is married to somebody hmm? and then there's a guy his name is muhammad is a prophet and your sister was previously a widow or married you know i mean what's wrong with that should this is not her fault and then the prophet he say to the husband which is your brother-in-law why why you did marry from a previously married woman which actually here uh, he's talking about her vagina he says is she a virgin virgin or she is not a virgin the guy he said she is previously married whereupon the muhammad he said why 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 don't you marry a young girl so you could sport with her look at the wisdom look at the ethic a man is encouraging a man to hate her his wife who is married to he's happy with her and what is the target to find little girl so we can sport with her do you believe it imagine you are a father of that woman who is married to this guy jabir and you hear muhammad saying to this jabir why you did marry this woman why why you don't marry a little girl so you can play with her here you see the mentality of muhammad that he is a sick person not only he's a fraud not only he's a filthy he is he's mentally sick because this is the best man of the muslims advising the best advice who can advise better than muhammad nobody right yeah what kind of a sport exactly I mean she's a child and the Muslim they might say CP it doesn't say she is a child no it says read carefully hmm. and she could sport with you or you could amuse with her amuse as if she is a cat she could amuse with you I said <laughs> Abdullah died and he fell murder in Uhud which means this man in his family they fighting for Muhammad they die for Muhammad and left nine or seven daughters behind him I therefore did not approve the idea I should bring a girl like them do you see it his brother he died and this guy now taking care of the family of his brother and he have seven or nine daughters and they are little girls I did not approve the idea Muslims Muhammad and Abdul Fifi Mimi Juju Susu don't say Christian prince. Christian prince. The hadith doesn't say that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, it doesn't say that. No, it says that. I did not, I therefore did not approve of the idea that I should bring a girl like them. Like them who? The children of his brother. 
I preferred continue but I preferred to bring a woman who should look after them which mean those are little girls who need somebody to take and take care and look after them isn't it clear guys I assure you the Muslim they will make videos at CP it doesn't say that <laughs> it doesn't say that <laughs> how you can even defend such a man how even you can follow such a man encouraging a growing man to go after children to have sex with them and making him hate his present wife for the purpose of amusing her and amusing you sporting with her sporting with you and what do you mean sport with her she's a child what you will do exactly she will jump on your belly how in the world anyone can believe in such a man i'm going to open my sky for christians to call because i promised them today that i will take calls and i want to keep my promise i hope we will not lose internet <clears throat> Look like we are going fine. Let us see where is my Skype. <coughs> All right. Okay, my Skype is open. If there is any Christian want to call, and uh, let us do it this way: the one who texts me first, I will call you. So don't call right away. All right. Hamidin Ham Hamis. What is that? Muslim? If you are a Muslim, let me know. Text me first, please. And then uh, I will call you based on your text, which means first text, first call. So we don't disturb each other like you call me when I'm talking. Just text says, I want to talk. I wanna, can you call me? And I will call you back. Seriously, what we are going to talk about in Skype, uh, Sarah? Don't talk, nobody is asking you to call. Seriously, I mean, what's wrong with people? Seriously, what we are going to talk about? You don't have something, anything to talk. Don't call. Yeah. So Christians, they can call if you have anything to say. If you have anything to share for the free. We are receiving calls for Christians. Uh, <clears throat> Sometimes I read comments and comments are funny. People, they say things without even using their brain. No, not necessarily this topic, but you can talk about this topic. I mean, why, why, we, know, why we wouldn't want to talk about this topic? Why not? But if you have different topic, no problem. Yeah, we will take Muslims if there's a Muslim when I talk to us, no problem. <clears throat> yeah. So how this man Muhammad can be a prophet of God? Uh, somebody asking question about Sahih al-Bukhari. Let us see what is the question. Is it true that Sahih al-Bukhari was written by Imam called Muhammad ibn Ismail ibn Ibrahim ibn al-Bukhari? Ustad Abdul says that. So, yeah, so what? Uh, by the way, al-Bukhari, there's no, no, there's nothing is called written by al-Bukhari. There's no book called al-Bukhari. Al-Bukhari, which we are reading right now, uh, this is not a book written by Al-Bukhari. Nobody have a book. It's called Al-Bukhari. All right. Hello? Good morning, Mr. Prince. Hey, my friend. How are you? Doing good, Mr. Prince. How are you? How is everybody? I'm all right. Uh, what do you like to say with us, to us? I want to I want to share with one one verse from the John chapter John chapter uh, 
uh, Jesus says, I am before Abraham. Yes. That chapter, you want to help me to people to understand also where he saw Abraham in the Old Testament. Uh, in uh, Genesis 14 chapter, when Abraham went to the war and when he coming, he meet one person. You want to explain to that to people that verse, please. Well, you know, the, there's uh, uh, the Bible speak about uh, even the, the Lord, he came with the, uh, two, uh, two more person, you know, to Abraham and Abraham, yes. he bowed down. So uh, when, when the Messiah, he spoke about uh, uh, Abraham, he saw me and he, uh, you know, pleased with my day, you know, he was uh, rejoicing with my day. He did not mention when, yes. w which one it was when he saw him, but obviously the Bible su I, support that he saw him, you know. He did not Mr. say, Prince, yeah. Mr. Prince, you know the Milka Zida in the Bible, in the Genesis? Milka Milk Sadek, yeah. Yes, he is the one as a Christ is coming. You, uh, you please read it for us, that verse, and it will be helpful for each and every people can understand that verse. That is the one, he brings the bread and wine to him, and he is the most king of the church. Uh, he is coming, coming from the place, is from the heaven but uh, in the map that name is not uh, exit anywhere that that is the one i want to to explain to the people for everyone mm, I'm, I'm trying just to understand so uh, 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 you see for me uh, uh, god he appeared to abraham and and there is there is the statement in the bible in many places so i cannot say it's just only this is what about uh, when Melchizedek came and spoke to uh, 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 and he saw Abraham. I can say that God confirmed that he met Abraham, and Abraham he saw him as a man. Correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And this is the most important because uh, 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 the Messiah, uh, you know, see, see the Bible first of all is not like is not uh, let us say mention everything Abraham he did. Same as everything about Jesus. Correct? There's no way that you can write a book about someone like the messiah and this book is yes. a few hundred pages yes. right which means yes, th there's details in the bible which is the most important for us not like the quran about muhammad don't enter his house and don't eat his sandwiches those silly stuff you know yes. so the, yes, yes. the the purpose of the bible is to deliver to us we the, the people who need the guidance the most important information not normal information otherwise uh, uh, the books should be written about Jesus, maybe a big, a huge library, because a person, yes, yes. a person who live in this earth thirty-three years, how many words he said? You know what I mean? Yes, yes. How many words he said? How many sentences he made? Uh, how many uh, conversation he had? For sure, a lot. So what the Bi what the Bible focus in is what we need to know, not everything. So. Uh, uh, the Bible confirmed that uh, uh, you know uh, uh, Abraham he met uh, uh, like if you go Genesis eighteen right and yes. he, and even Genesis Gen fourteen and Genesis uh, Jesus uh, sorry Genesis seventeen uh, so anyway uh, 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 it confirmed that the Messiah he met Abraham and not only that yes. Abraham he saw my day and the Jews they said to him well how you saw how you say that uh, yeah. you met Abraham you are not even fifty years old. And, and here you notice that the Muslims and the Jews, they have similar, uh, let us say, uh, uh, functioning of uh, understanding the Messiah. So they could not understand that this is the person speaking that he is God. They are looking at a man who is not even 50 years old, but yet he claimed that he saw and Abraham saw him. And then, and then after that, uh, uh, they, you know, they try to kill him, you know, because simply he is claiming to be God, you know, as right. simple as that. And the, yes, and the chapter saying that, and the Muslim they say, uh, where, where Jesus says, "I'm God, worship me." I'm not God. Yes. Yeah. So the the same chapter is saying it clearly that they want to kill him because he is claiming to be God. He's claiming to be God. Yeah. And uh, uh, Jesus did not say, "I'm not claiming to be God," right? <laughs> like, yes, sir. Like when they said, uh, the, "Is he claiming to be God?" Did, did he say, "I am, I, I am, I don't mean that"? No, he did not say. He did not say that. 
and yes, yes. and then you know the Messiah he come from in in like uh, in other places like in Matthew chapter twenty two, uh, yes. the Messiah he said to them uh, to the Jews, and those are very well versed people. What do you say of yes, Christ? Yes. What do you say of Christ? They say he is the son of David. You know from David. David. So the Messiah he said to them, well if he is a son of David, then how David called him God. God. Yes. You know, how 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 David called him my Lord, my God. So the yes. Messiah himself, he said it clearly that I am the Lord of Abraham, I am the Lord of David, even though the Bible, by the way, says that Messiah by birth, he is from the seeds of David. But as we knew that uh, Messiah is not a son of any one seed, he's not a son of any man, you know, uh, he yes. is just a God in flesh because simply he yes. exists before his birth. But the Messiah here he confirmed. What do you say about the Messiah? They said he is son of yeah. David. Then he gave them a question which they cannot answer. Yes. How then, if he is a son of David, which means he is disagreeing with them, if he is a son of David, then how David call him Lord? Lord. You know, he called him Lord Jehovah. Jehovah. So if 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 he is just from David, that's mean he is just a man like everybody. You know? Yes. But he is, yes. he is by birth from David, which means from the, because he's born of the Jews, as simple as that. But the Messiah, yes. he is the Lord of David, and David, and remember David here, uh, he is the highest man for the Jews, like he is but the king, the most powerful king. So when you say the king of the Jews, who is the most powerful, he is saying to Christ, you are my God. So who is yes. who is the Messiah then? Who is so he is the Lord of David, and this is the this yes. David, the King of everybody. It's yes. like yes. it's like today we don't want to make it an example, but for people who don't understand, it's like you have a president in your country or a king, yes. and he is the most powerful man in the country. Yet he sees somebody, he call him my Lord. Yes, you know my God. So yes, uh, the Muslim claim about about Jesus, uh, you know, uh, nowhere he says he is God. I mean, it's all over the Bible. When Jesus says, yes. "I am, I am the truth," you see, okay, how you can be the truth? The truth uh, uh, in Islam, one of the names of Allah is the truth. He's trying to copy uh, Jesus. Uh, you know, the yes. truth is only yes. God. There's nothing else except God. And He said, "I am the life." Yes. How you can be the life? How you can be the life? You cannot be the life unless you are God, because when you say, "I am the life," which means that all source of life is coming from Me. You have life. Yes, yes. It's coming from Me. You know, all life, the, the the all source of life, not only human. So I am the life, and then I am the resurrection. And yet they say to you, "Where Jesus said, I'm God." How you can be the resurrection if you are just a prophet? How you can be the resurrection? How you can be the life? Imagine I am claiming to be a prophet, and uh, say I say to you, "I am the life." <laughs> I must be crazy then, unless I mean that I'm God. So. Obviously, the Messiah is saying clearly in many places that he is God. He is the he's the begin, yes. he is the beginning. He's the end. End. Yes. You know, it's just just to, to add to what you said, the Muslims. I'm sure you heard them before saying, uh, yes. "Where where was the Trinity before Jesus was born?" I don't know if you heard you heard that question before. Well, because they are because they are limited in their in their uh, you know the the way they function with their brain. Uh, because they are, they are, you know, they are healed hostages with Islam, so they don't want to think out of the box. You see, yes. the Messiah before he was born, he was exist. That's why he's saying, yes, "Before yes. Abraham, I am." Yes. <laughs> see, yes. you that are is, saying to me, "What is it? Was a Trinity?" Here we go. The Trinity is there. So yes. the Messiah is there. His birth have nothing to do with his existence. This is why his death would not make the Messiah doesn't exist anymore because the death is the death of the flesh, the flesh, the flesh of the body. But the Messiah was exist before that the flesh is exist. Right? Right, sir. The flesh is just, is just a stage for him. He is in this earth. He came to us in the flesh so we can see him. So God, he humbled himself. That's what the Bible says. God humbled himself and he took the image of a visible man, human being. Right? Human being. So, yes, sir. Uh, uh, the, the Messiah, and this is what the Bible is saying, he is the visible image of the invisible God. God, yes, that is true, sir. And yet they say to you where Jesus said, and by the way, saying God, it's easy, I can say I'm God too. 
but you can do, you cannot do what Jesus can do. Yes. Anyone can say I'm God. So I mean, what a big deal to say I'm God. I can say Allah. He said He's God, but He cannot do what Jesus do. Yes, that Allah, is true. Allah, the God of Islam, He do not even know what He created, how He created things. Stupidity. Yes. The Quran is full of stupid mistakes. All right. That is true. That is true, sir. All right. Anything else, my friend? <clears throat> One small request from you. All right. From my side. When the ex-Muslim, they asking to, uh, you ask them to come to the Christ. They, they, you say to them to read Bible. So I want to request it to you. Even the people reading New Testament, especially, tell them to read in the red letter Bible. It's, it will be more easy for them. The Christ, what is speaking, it's all in be the red letters. It will be to be understand them exactly what is who speaking correctly. So it will be easy. Hmm. People get confusion. Who speaking here? So um, they don't know exactly what. Well, this speaking. is a this is a design so it will be of easy yeah. For them okay. To write letters to help them to understand. Yeah, most of people, my friend, they are reading from the internet. You know, because those who leave Islam in but my it's channel. Available. It's available, uh, princess, uh, in the internet. The red letter Bible, King James version. Red letter Bible is available. I also have in my phone. Mm, okay. Well, may, uh, so, uh, maybe you can yeah. post. You can give a link to the admin. She can post it around when we have somebody is calling, and that would be a good idea. Or you can post it in the sure, sure. in the comment I later. I will try to do that. I don't know how to do that one, but I will try to. In do the that comment, you can you can post, post later in the comment after you hang up in the comment of the video after we finish, and we will we will have it. All right. Okay. Okay. Thank okay. you, my friend. Thank you very much, Prince. And uh, one more thing. Uh -huh. uh, I Christmas time I I ask you to pray for me. I was I was in trouble. I don't have job. I don't have money. I yeah, I remember. You, you are the one who <laughs> yeah. you work in, in Saudi yes. Arabia, right? Okay. Yes, yes. I'm still here. Uh, I today morning only when I came for the duty. It's five o'clock here. Mm -hmm. I came to duty. My my superior called me and told me, Jason, uh, within uh, three days to four days you will get your money. What uh, you work for this company. So and maybe two days or three days, I will get my money. Wonderful. And uh, thanks to everybody who will pray for me and pray for me more. The next step, what I'm taking, I want to be exactly a correct path. I want to walk in the correct way to control, take my family in the right path. So right. please pray for us. Well, my, 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 my friend, I want to give you an advice from my heart. I know that, you know, people, they go to Saudi Arabia to find jobs. And I know that it's nothing wrong with that. But living there is not really a good choice. So try to find a job in different area, different territory yes. where your family can live a normal life as a Christian. Yes. And you can practice your belief as a Christian with the freedom. And, uh, yes. you know, God will provide, my friend. Yes, yes. I mean to that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. I will take care and God bless you all. Take care. And uh, thanks for you opened the, just I opened it morning phone. I saw you telling uh, only Christian people can call. I'm very happy to call you. So I jumped it inside. Uh, I called you the same time. Uh, weekly one time, if you keep it for the Christian Atheist people to talk to you, yeah. I'll be very happy to. So we can talk to you. You cannot answer all your uh, Skype uh, messages. I know yesterday also you were speaking that one to to the people. Yeah. So like this one day you keep it for us. It will be very nice to be family together. Sure. The family is most important in the Christ. Christ is say. Uh, be as a family don't be a separate separately we don't like separate people we yeah. want to be as a family we are a like family a union. we are a family thank you yes. my friend god bless you and i will you, i will try thank to make you. it every friday you. and give my love to family mommy and dad okay take care take care bye bye god bless you bye. thank bye. you bye. sir friends bye bye all right <clears throat> um very nice person wonderful family he have working hard for to 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 provide his family uh, you know uh, uh, life is full of uh, uh, stories and there is many wonderful people they are trying to work hard to provide their family and they are born in a let us say uh, generally speaking a poor country you know uh, but nothing make you poor as being poor in your heart. Because at the end of the day, everybody live. All of us, we will eat something, bread, it doesn't matter what we eat. 
there is poor who they are living i saw poor reading read read poor people but they are happy they have nice a smile me myself i don't have it and the other day i was watching a video about people in the philippines they have a flood the flood took their houses and, and, and they are they are smiling <laughs> i mean imagine those people they have nothing they already they have nothing before the flood little tiny house made from you know and you think they are poor even if you are rich because there is people who have a lot of money but still they are poor because they want more and they will never be satisfied so we pray that this brother here and i hope everybody will pray for me with, with me uh, that he will find a good job to, to 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 provide to his family he's not asking for much he's not asking for to be uh, 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 like a, you know a rich man he just want to have a job for his family so pray for this brother you know so the Lord will provide him and the Lord will open door for him now we have somebody want to call okay let's see we will try to have an open uh, call for everybody uh, you know in Friday uh, for Christians like today I think this is a good idea every Friday we open sky for people to 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 call yeah the one who wanna call me he can call but the one who texts me now I send him sure I will send you confirmation let me call him I will call him now look like his internet is bad maybe I hope you will answer. Well, he is not answering. Hello? Hello? Yes, my friend. You are live on air. Hello? Yes, we hear you. You are live on air. Hello? We hear you. Hello? I think you have a bad internet like me. Hello? <laughs> we hear you, my friend. Go ahead. Yeah. Brother Christian Prince, can you hear me? Yes, I hear you. Go ahead. I hear you. Don't don't brother listen. Christian Prince, can don't, you hear me? Don't listen to me from YouTube. Listen to oh, me from Skype. Praise the Lord, brother. Uh, yeah. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you for taking my uh, call. And uh, I'm praying daily for you, for your protection and uh, and the wisdom what you share. That's a God's blessing. Uh, so I have uh, one thing to. Uh, just to discuss, uh, uh, I, I I know a lot of callers will be waiting. I, I, I will just tell my question and uh, you can take it off and I can drop off. No problem. Uh, what we see is uh, Jesus is a Jesus is a Jew, right? And according to Islam, also they believe that Jesus is a Jew, but they hate Jews. And if you see that Jesus is sitting uh, in the heaven with the God, and he's going to come back. But still, they hate the Jews, right? Hmm. So first, I just wanted first, to know first why of all, they don't, don't understand this concept and why they hate Jews. Yeah. Okay, I will answer you because as, as you requested after you hang up. Anything else you want to say? Uh, no, brother. Okay. Uh, I think uh, this will en en enlighten a couple of uh, brothers and a couple right. of sisters those who are listening to. All right. Thank you very much for your call. God bless you. Thank you, brother. God bless you and God protect you all the time. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, it's a it's a very wrong understanding to think that Jesus is a Jew. He is the Lord of the Jews. He is the King of the Jews. He is the God of the Jews. He is born of a Jewish family, yes, but he is not a Jew. By birth he is a Jew, but he is the God of the Jews. Do you understand what I'm saying? But I understand what you are trying to say to the Muslims. They hate the Jews and so. But you know, this is the same. Can be go to. I mean, uh, you see, Muslims they don't they, they hate the Jews, not because uh, they you know. I mean, they understand even why. That Muhammad said hate the Jews. That's it. If Muhammad says love the Jews, they will love the Jews. This is why we say Muhammad is the God of Islam. It's not you know uh, why why you should hate the Jews. I mean, how you can generalize even anyway? 
Everybody is a Jew, you should hate him. Why? Even Muhammad he says that time will come. And if a Jew hide behind a store, any Jew hide, hide behind a store, stone or a tree, the stone or the tree will call and say, hey, there is a Jew behind me, kill him. So Muslims, they are following blindly whatever this man, crazy man, Muhammad, says. Not because they are convinced, but because they are blindly obey. Muhammad, he made verses, says you have to obey Muhammad. Whoever obey Muhammad, obey Allah. Which means obedience of Muhammad is from obedience of God. So he is God in earth. Yet he don't claim to be God, but he have the authority of God. Muhammad, he says something. Allah, he says something. Actually, Muhammad, he's, he win. You know, there is many things in the Quran. The Muslim, they say to you, it's abrogated by a hadith. How Muhammad, he can abrogate the words of Allah if Allah is his God. So Allah, he says something. Muhammad, he says something. Which one we follow? Muhammad. Because Muhammad is more important from Allah, which is a fake God. Muhammad, he just used uh, Allah as a proxy, like, you know, he's a, he's a tool. Muhammad, when I have sex, he made verses saying, uh, any woman, she want to give herself to the Prophet. Muhammad, he want uh, people not to come to his house, eat his sandwiches. I mean, have you ever heard of a God saying, don't, don't come to the house of the Prophet to eat his sandwiches? What is this? The sandwich God? All right, we have somebody trying to call. <clears throat> Tell me if you want me to call you, my friend. Just don't send me a text. If you want to call, say, I want, please, can you call me and I will call you. Hmm? <clears throat> have you ever heard of a God saying to his prophet, any woman she can give herself and you may differ between them you, you you might delay some what is that Allah is giving tickets for sexual activities okay somebody asking can I call <coughs> no Skype is very slow Let us call this gentleman. <coughs> uh, hi, TP. Hello, my friend. You are live on air. Yeah, my audio is clear, right? Sorry? Uh, is my audio clear? Yes, it is. Please listen to me from Skype, not from YouTube. Uh, I'm uh, speaking from... Uh... Skype only. All right. I'm calling from India. You're welcome, my friend. We love the people in India. Yeah. Actually, I'm also a Christian uh, by birth and uh, by practice. Okay. And uh, I used to debate a lot of Muslim friends in India. Mm -hmm. uh, some people who challenge me, I challenge them back. And I used to listen to all of your uh, uh, podcast in YouTube mm -hmm. uh, while going to work. Mm -hmm. Uh, in fact, many days I used to listen in earphone and I read them. Yeah, well, uh, we, you know, uh, when, when you want to discuss religion with somebody else, you better, you know, like uh, uh, educate yourself before you speak about the topic. Otherwise, you will look ignorant. Like the Muslims now, when they speak to me, all of them, they look ignorant. Even those, the ones, they grow beard, they, uh, you know, they look very ignorant. So education is, yeah, yeah. education is a must. Only facts. Yeah. Yeah, that is very important that I always realize and I did that. Uh, I wanted to talk to you about uh, John chapter 6. What do you think about John chapter 6? I am a Catholic myself. I believe in the Eucharist. Uh, do you have the same understanding on John chapter 6, which is Jesus presenting his body and blood, soul and divinity in uh, the Eucharist? I don't understand you, my friend. What, what, what you believe in what? Uh, Eucharist, the the bread and wine becoming the body and blood of Christ. Repent. Bread and wine, which is ah, you mean okay, okay, you know, okay, yeah, yeah, okay, 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 yeah, 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 okay, yeah, right. yeah, okay, yeah, right. yeah, all right, all right, uh, yeah, you know the Messiah, the Messiah, he said, uh, this is my uh, body will be broken for you, right, and this is my blood will yeah, be yeah. shed will be shed for shed for you, and do this yeah. to rem to remember me now. 
uh, the Messiah when he said he said do this to remember me uh, but by by doing that uh, uh, as he said as if we are drinking uh, uh, from but not it is which means it is metaphorical we are not drinking blood right uh, uh, but in John chapter 6 he is telling truly truly I say to you unless you eat my body and drink my flesh you will not have life in you no my friend yes he uh, when, when he's so, ate, but still this is a metaphorical did, did anyone eat the body of Jesus I mean uh, yeah uh, let me let me try to explain uh, to you what I'm, what I I'm John chapter 6 and uh, the Last Supper are connected. Yeah, my friend. Because if you go to Good Friday mm. and look at, you will see only an execution. Mm. Unless in the context of the Last Supper, mm. you will not see a sacrifice there. Mm. So the sacrifice yeah. is orchestrated in uh, Monday Thursday and then the Good Friday, the execution happens. Isn't it? Yeah, you see, when when you read, when you read, try to read in in more like uh, see the whole image, not only one verse. If you read in Ch in John chapter six, you will see that Jesus saying to them that I am I am the bread of this life. It's not the it's not he said it's not by the bread only human being live, but by the word of God, right? Not only by the bread. Right so God so the Messiah. Right, sorry. Word of God is Jesus Christ. So yes, by correct. Him. But what? But this is mean. It's not really about eating the bread. It's not about him being eating like in the bread. It's it, it, this is symbolic of what he did to us. So he is the bread of life. He is our he is our provider. This is he. This, this is the real provider. You see, bread is coming from somebody from provider. Somebody provide you the food. Somebody provide you the life. Somebody provide you your real blood. So someone provide us your existence. That is God. And the Messiah is saying clearly that I am the bread of life and by me you will have eternity all right so if you if you uh, uh, if you go to John chapter 6 you will see in verse I think verse number 20 uh, 27 uh, he's saying to them don't work for the food which is going can be spoiled but for the food which is going to be eternal and the one who work for it will give in eternal life and that is the only one who can give you that food that is the messiah right so yeah. this is yeah. the, the the food here is not about something we eat literally but doing uh -huh. doing what jesus said is to remember him is something beautiful uh -huh. and it's a blast for sure because he is saying by doing this you are doing that which means you are receiving my body and you are receiving my gift to you so yes Taking the bread and drinking the the the, uh, the, uh, the little juice or wine, it, this is this is a gift from the Lord. So we remember what He did to us and give us a blessing for our heart yeah. and our body. Yeah, that that's good explanation. Thank you for your uh, uh, briefing on this. You're welcome. Uh, so so. Uh, yeah, you know, I want you to be careful uh, always when you say those sentences to Muslims because Muslims they might think we drink blood. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean. They will say, "Oh, those people, those Christians are zombies. They eat, they drink. Uh, you know, they eat, they eat Jesus, and they 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 drink Jesus." <laughs> so we we have to be careful. Otherwise, uh, already they are making lies about us by yeah. millions. They, so they, they easily uh, they uh, straightforward. They will make lies, but uh, if you uh, give them something to uh, something difficult to understand, they will just twist it. Yeah, they twist it in purpose, not only they understand, they understand it, but they twist it in I, purpose to make it look like uh, not what it is. I, 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 uh, I build stories uh, and then I just twist them in, into uh, challenging their own idea. Say, for example, I tell them uh, a temple priest uh, who is possessed by their God tells that, uh, uh, give me your uh, uh, women uh, to me. And uh, what will you do? I ask them. So they tell me that I will beat them to pulp. He is a false one. Yeah. Then uh, the same is told by uh, your prophet. What will yeah. you do? I ask them. <laughs> then yeah. they get into a shock. Where, where did you uh, say that? Then I quote the Quranic verses. All right. Then they will not be able to answer me. <laughs> All right. Well, yeah, my, my friend, I want to say thank you for calling us because there's many people trying to call. I hope you understand. Yeah, and uh, I get to bless yeah, you for your call. And uh, 
uh, uh, we wish you the best in Libyan Muslims. All right. Uh, yeah. Please take, relax, Jesus. take care. God bless. Bye bye. All right. Somebody else trying to call. Let us call this person. Um, <clears throat> it's not answering you know don't call me when I am live with somebody I mean wait until we drop the call just send me a text say I want to call and I will call you back and now he is not answering All right. Well, we will go to the second person. Just send me a text saying, "Can you call me?" Don't call, because then I would decline your your call to me. Uh, can I call with that topic? All right. Hello? Hello? Yes, you are live on air. Hi. Thank you for calling me back. Can you hear me? Yes, sure, I will hear you. Yes. So, I, uh, did you read the text of the topic that I wanted to ask you about? Uh, I could not really get a chance to read it. Let us see. Can I talk about what women gets in Jannah if it's okay sure go ahead yeah so I'm actually working on a video and then I got well basically um, there are many verses in the Quran that mention about what the righteous um, people are going to get in Jannah mm -hmm. um, like in the Surah 78 38 uh, 55 but then, do you think that all these verses only uh, implied for men only? You see? Or okay, the, the, the Quran, the only thing the Quran speak about women they will have in heaven, that they will be in heaven. That's all. doesn't say really what they will have in heaven. The rest of the description is for Muslims, men. You see, when, when yeah, the, uh, right. uh, and we can prove that easy because the Quran described they will have this, they will have a fruit, they will be reclining in their couches, and with them, with them, the whore, right? So, yes. obviously, he's a woman of equal age. Yeah, right. So, obviously, he's speaking to yeah. who? So, the one who is the one who is speaking to? He's speaking to men. Otherwise, that will make them lesbian because saying to the, you know, and, and you're whore with you. So, and he described those whore that they are, you know, they did not have uh, any sex before. So, if you read the whole uh, verses, this is about Allah speaking to men, which is Muhammad, not to anyone else, only men. All right. So those men, what they will, what they will have in heaven. The only thing the Quran speak about women they will have that they will be in heaven, but they would, what they, what they will be, they will be sex toys to, for the men. Yeah, because I've, uh, I received well, conversation with Muslims and they said, no, these are also part of this, are also for women, because not all those verses mention about women, only one or two. Uh, no, we see, uh, uh, the, 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 we have the hadith. The hadith confirm what is in the Quran. We'll explain it. Muhammad himself is explaining. So, uh, was Muhammad lying about what he said? Then the, this will be a problem for the Muslims. Uh, so when Muhammad he said that he will have at, at least uh, uh, 72 women and two, uh, 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 some of them they are wives from the earth and the rest are from the virgins uh, which Allah will provide in the heaven. So uh, obviously the promise is that the man will have many, the women she will be one of the many. Right? One of the many. Yeah, one of the many. And she herself, she is a gift for the man. She, he is not a gift for the women. She will be, you see, in chapter 55, verse number 72, it says that those are going to be even jailed inside their tent, which means they cannot see anyone else. Just for the man. Hmm? They will be jailed. They will be restrained in their tents. If you go to chapter 55, verse number 72, that those women... They are jailed. They cannot see any other man except the man who will sleep with them. So
So what kind of reward is given to the women is being jailed in a cage so the rooster can come? <laughs> you know? So is this is this is a this is a rooster chicken religion. There's one rooster and many chickens. This is the mentality of the heaven of Muhammad. Yeah, this is the fact. One rooster, because if you have two roosters in one place, they will fight, right? They will kill each other. Yes. So one rooster yes. and many, many female chickens. And this is the heaven of Islam. As simple as that. Oh, great. So yeah. well, they, they, promised, they promised the women in Islam to be a chicken. One of many chickens who will be given to a rooster. You know? In heaven, he will have high walls. Why high walls? Because those people, they are Arab. They are very, you know, uh, private. They don't want you want to see. Walls? Yeah, you will, you will have high walls, and nobody can see behind those walls. So you can you see. That's why it says here, "Horon maqsuratun fil khiyam." So what? What it's amazing. Yeah. So uh, you know, the, the 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 best description is a rooster chicken religion. You know. So when I talk to Muslims, and then I came across with this one verse, uh, if you can pull out also from your uh, screen, Surah 33, verse 35. Uh, and then the funny, yeah, the funny with this verse is the Tafsir, actually, from Ibn Kathir. Mm -hmm. uh, 33, verse 35. 35, um, okay. 33, verse... 35 yeah about, about about don't enter the house of the prophet uh, wait i'm going to see that you're talking about chapter 33 right chapter 33 verse number 53 yeah yeah this is about yes. don't enter the house of the prophet and don't uh, you know don't ask uh, <laughs> don't eat his food <laughs> 35 is for uh, this is the part I think the only part in the Quran that mentioned what women will get in Jannah. No, no, this is this is this verse here. I think you are quoting wrong number. number. This verse here is about don't enter the house of the Prophet and don't eat his sandwiches, which is very silly. Oh, you are saying 35? 33 verse 35. Ah, 35. See, I, I thought you are saying 50. It's my yeah. fault. Sorry. Okay, 35. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, the, the verse saying just they will go in heaven. That's it. Doesn't say what they will do there. But the women in heaven, they will be just uh, chickens. <laughs> I mean, what what is the reward for the women? What, what, what exactly? What is the women she will be doing in the heaven? Exactly. What she will be doing there? She will be, excuse my language, sex toy for the rooster who Allah promised him many of them. Like, is the man, like you see, God created Adam, he created with him what Eve, right? Eve. Okay, so if Allah is the same God who created Adam, why we don't go to heaven if the logic is, you know, uh, uh, God is the same God of Adam, is the same God of Muhammad. So why the God who created only one woman for Adam, he is going to create too many women for the sons of Adam? Doesn't make sense. And in the same time, those women, as an example, the whore, all of them, they look the same. They have the same voice, they sing the same song, and they have the same name, and they have the same look. So it's very stupid even to promise me like 100 Barbie, but all of them, they look the same. So what's the point of this? Imagine you look like you have, uh, uh, you, you, you have, you have 100 women with you. And all of them, they look the same, the same, and they, they, they sing even the same song. They say that it's like a Barbie machine. It's like, a, you know, it's like a, 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 a toy. So it's a stupid deception fit with people who live at that time, those Bedouin, trying to tempt them with, with sexual and wine. What the heaven of Allah? Wine. This is what the Arab they like to do to have. Ginger, because the Arab drink ginger. <laughs> the wine mixed with ginger. And... Uh, 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 honey and a river of honey and milk and then women that's it and then fruits so the heaven of uh, of Muhammad is just a hotel in Las Vegas five, uh, ten stars but he don't have by the way lobster he don't have fish because uh, uh, the uh, the Quran confirmed that only, only 
only bird they will eat which mean very nice i mean i mean which is bad actually i mean come on i spend my life eating chicken and go to heaven now eating chicken i want to eat for, i want to eat shrimp for once in my lifetime like, come on i want to eat lobster they are expensive here you know i want to i, I, I want to eat i want to eat uh, i want to eat salmon, salmon fish i mean I, I i i go to heaven and now i can only will eat with a chicken Oh. Yeah, all right. Yeah. All right. Anything else? Um, but the funny uh, with this, yeah, but the funny with this verse was actually in the Tafsir. Yeah. Uh, I pulled out the Tafsir from Ibn Kathir. If yeah. you cannot put it in your skin, maybe you can just read the sentence. Yeah. It says here the reason <clears throat> for revelation. Um, and I quote, Imam Ahmad recorded that Um Salama, the wife of the Prophet, said, I said to the Prophet, mm. why is it that we are not mentioned in the Quran as men, as men are? Mm. And then one day, without, re re without realizing it, he was calling from the member and I was combing my hair, so I tied back my hair and I went to my chamber in my house and I started listening out and he was saying from the member this chapter. So basically, the reason for this revelation of this ayah is that because Muhammad just got complaints from one of his wives. Right. Always, right? always those things happen because Muhammad is simply, he makes things up to fit with, with what's happening around him. So somebody complained, a woman, she complained. But remember, Muhammad, he made, uh, he, in, the, in different hadith, he said that the majority of women, they will be in hellfire. Remember that hadith where he said that they are half a brain? Okay, so those who will go to heaven is those who they are only obedience to their husbands and totally obedience, mm -hmm. and they are literally chickens, which means you have no say, nothing to say, and that will make you go to heaven. Otherwise, the majority of women they will go to hell, and the hadith confirmed that. So, Muhammad he asked them to give him money, donation, so then Allah will forgive to them, so they might go to heaven, which means. Muhammad not only is confirming that he's a fraud, but he claiming that if you give little, you know, I mean, some earring, they start giving him earring and rings. Uh, by giving some gold to Muhammad, then Allah will take you to heaven, even if you are a bad woman. You know? Yeah. Because uh, what he said, he said, women give it charity. Charity to who? To Muhammad. He want their money. And because I saw most of you go into hell, okay, if women by giving charity they will go to heaven, that's mean they are still bad, but by giving the money to Muhammad, they will go to heaven. What kind of heaven this heaven is? You see, is is uh, uh, he is not saying he is not saying uh, uh, change the way you live, change the way you are, give it charity, and then they start giving him their earring and their rings. And that's supposed to will make them to go to heaven. Oh, women folk, you should give a charity and ask much forgiveness for I saw in your block amongst the doer of the hell. So they are the major people of hell are women. But the fact is not true because this is totally contradiction with the Quran. If Muhammad promised every man, many women in the heaven, regardless of the number, that's mean the number of women, they will be way more than men. <laughs> right? Yes. So either this hadith is a, is a fraud or the Quran is a fraud. I believe both of them, they are fraud anyway. And not only that, Muhammad he, here, he made some stupid mistakes. He claimed that women, they will go to hell because they have deficiency in their religion and deficiency in their intelligence. And if you think about it, both who he called them deficiency is not a reason to go to hell. Because let us say a person, he have deficiency in his brain. Let's say he's he's crazy. Yeah, he's a crazy. Allah created them yeah. that way. Yeah, he's a crazy. Let's say somebody's a crazy. Well, this is not right. God is God of justice. He will not send him to hell. This guy is a crazy. You see, God judge you by what He gave you. If you don't have the brain which you can judge by, what to do, what not to do, then why God will send you to hell? To hell. So Muhammad saying that women they are stupid. Therefore, they will go to hell. But this is stupid of him to say, because if a woman, she is a stupid, she is the maid of Allah. And that means Allah should go to hell, not the woman, because she is made of the maker. Look, and what they ask him, what our deficiency in her intellect and religion? He said the testimony, the proof of the in, 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 like deficiency in, 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 in intellect and religion, that the woman testimony 
is one uh, two women equal to one man so Muhammad he want to prove to the women that you are half a brain by saying a rule which he he is the one who created saying that two women equal to one man in, 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 in witnesses and all of us we knew this is stupid because women they have actually when it's come to details <clears throat> women they have better memory as an example if you if you go with your husband to a, a dinner and then oh, we come yeah. back and we ask the husband what you ate he will not remember he will not remember Sure. The, the woman she would describe what women they were wearing the shoes the perfume the earring the bracelet the, I mean she would describe everything the guy he would not even remember what he ate yesterday so here Muhammad prove again that he's a false man he put the women down in purpose because he need the men he need fighters women are just women sitting at home those are the fighters so he gave full control for the man full of promises for the man and the women it just exists for the man definitely yeah anything else so one thing also cp okay um they used to bring up this verse also uh surah 41 <laughs> verse 31 mm -hmm. muslim women used to bring this uh, verse mm. and here it says we are your protectors well i'm taking from the use of ali translation mm -hmm. it says here we are your protectors in this life and in the hereafter. Mm. Therein shall ye have all that your souls shall desire. Mm. Yeah. So well, they said, well, whatever we want, we, we, we get. Yeah, actually, there is there is many Islamic scholars, they speak about this, that the Quran confirmed that even if you are going to be a homosexual, you can have sex with men. And actually, I can show tons oh. of reference about that. Yeah, a man, he can, because it says whatever you wish. Actually, there's a video, you can search it. Uh, a Muslim, he called me, and he we did talk about in that video uh, about uh, if, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, having sex with his mother. Because in Islam, they say, many scholars, what? that you can have sex with your mother and your daughter. Some, they say, no, it's not allowed. But the Quran says whatever you wish. So if you can search for that video, and, the, and then he said to me clearly, so what's wrong with that? Search it, you will find it. I think it's called uh, uh, um, I don't know, Paradise something, Christian Prince, you have to put it, you know, the Muslim, he was calling me, and he was defending, he was angry, and he's saying to me, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with you? Actually, I will try to find it and play it right now, after you, uh, after you finish. I will try to find the video yeah, and uh, you know let us see Christian Prince you know for me it's very hard to find my videos <laughs> because you type my name you find in this number uh, <clears throat> you need to remember you need to remember the name of the video uh, heaven maybe debate let's see um, yeah let us see, maybe this one. In 2020, start off the year okay, right. Show your this commitment one. to your family. To I will put it in the other speakers so everybody, including you, can hear. Okay. Yeah, actually, after you hang up, I will I will play it. Uh, anything else you want to say? Oh, uh, that's it. All right. Thank you very much for calling. Yeah. And God bless. Take care. Bye. God bless. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So uh, uh, you know, uh, I, I think I got the. Oh no, this is not the. Maybe this is not the one we want. But let us see. Hello. Yes, Sheikh Talal. How are you? Can you hear me? I do hear you. Okay. Did you hear our topic, Sheikh Talal? Uh, you kind of didn't have a topic. You started with the Jannah. Now you're mm. ending up somewhere. Well, it's all the same. All of all the Jannah is about the breast and boobs and nipples, as you know. So, what do you think about your prophet promising you a companion in heaven? And specifically, when he says that you will have a Jannah with deep shade, what does that mean? The first thing I would like to do is to, rec to set some records straight. Okay, my friend, don't set record. Either you want to call, talk to me about the topic, or why you call me. What record is it? Yeah, I think this is not the not not the one. Anyway, I need I need to find the the video I'm talking about. 
Um, I don't remember really the name of the video. It might be uh, hard to find it. Um, okay, we have this person trying to call. Okay. Don't just text me says hello, I am Christian. Tell me, you want me to call you? Or just you are saying hello? Don't say hello, please. And don't say I would like to add you to Skype. Just call, call you know, tell me I want to call me. Uh, okay. Here we go. <clears throat> Bad internet. I'm trying to call you Tamara. This is you. You are saying this is your Tamara, right? So you said this is I'm Tamara, but I cannot. Let us try again. All right. Hello? Yes, uh, hello. You are live on air. Hey, Christopher. This is um, Tamara. I have a how are you, Tamara? How are you doing? Okay, um, you know, like on the second coming of Jesus, right? Yeah. Do they have like a in the Bible? Do they have like a specific? I don't know how to say it, like um, like what he want to do when he's second coming in the Bible. Well, you know what 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 will happen? Uh, supposedly, as the Bible says, that the, the Lord He said. Uh, those who don't believe in him bring bring those who don't believe and slay them which mean this is the time of judgment this is the time of your end this is the time where people who they are belong to him they will go taken to heaven and those people who they are not with him they will be punished so you know uh, the, the details we will leave that to the lord what he will do it because uh, there's uh, there's many verses about hell what will happen in hell but how he would do it exactly uh, you know i mean this is what he uh, uh, let's say let what to the Lord to the Lord you know this is his uh, this is his uh, his authority and uh, uh, speaking about details will not be really too much helpful because what we know is he is coming and those who they reject him they will be punished they will be sent to hell and those who believe in him they will be taken to heaven how he would do it exactly not much of details okay yeah um like um like like you know like I I don't know but like you know some Muslim would say that on the second coming of Jesus he will like probably get married or have kids well, I heard that and um what else well this is the first, would, yeah those yeah. those things they say there's no there's no uh, source for it not from a Christian belief not from Muslim belief it's a stupid thing they say things does not exist. Uh, uh, what get married and have kids because supposedly uh, he will stay uh, uh, some they say seven years some they say 40 years they are not even sure about the time and uh, th and the question should be for the muslims why jesus will come back why not muhammad exactly you know what why this uh, okay if you if you are watching a, a movie uh, tomorrow and uh, who is the one who lived to the end of the movie the hero right yeah the rest are just uh, combers like you know like numbers the guy who opened the door, the driver, the police, nobody even know their names, right? Yeah. But there's one person who survived the whole movie and he is the hero who will do accomplish the mission. So if the question will be, if Muhammad is the best of the prophet and he is the final prophet, so why the Messiah, he is the final one to come, right? And why he yes. is the one who will accomplish the mission? Because it's not Muhammad who will accomplish justice. It's not Muhammad who will finish everything. It is Jesus, the Messiah. So while while Muhammad at that time will be in the grave, remember at that moment when the Messiah come, Muhammad will be in the grave. The Messiah will be ruling the earth. And Muhammad, he said in the Hadith, he will come as a hakaman muqsitan, which means just judge. And remember. That a man he cannot be judge and just in the same time, because no man can okay. be just, right? Okay. So the Messiah not only will come back, but the Messiah will come and he will rule the earth, and he will be judge and just, and that confirm that he is God. Okay. Otherwise, no man 
Now, you know, in order for me to be just with you, I have to know the unseen, correct? Which means like uh, when, when when they go to court, uh, the mm -hmm. the judge judge by what he knew, the evidence okay. people provide. But maybe the evidence are fabricated. You know, you bring okay. witnesses and maybe the witnesses are, uh, uh, are a bunch of liars. But still the man, the judge, even if he's a good judge, he will judge only by what he he, he know and what he know is the what the proof you provide so the messiah he will be judge and he will be justice how he can do that okay. that is not something given to a man no man can be justice in any way in any means That's true. you know okay and even even if you know even if you know what happened how you can be judged because now what is the punishment who is going to decide the punishment? You know what I mean? But yeah. let us say I did something wrong to you, and now, mm -hmm. uh, and we know exactly what I did. Maybe I stole your money. Maybe I took your wallet. Maybe I whatever. Now, what is the perfect punishment for this person who did this crime? You know, because the crime should fit with the with the. I mean, the penalty should fit with the crime. So to be a person who is capable of giving. Punishment fit with the crime for whatever crime is because imagine we have billions of human beings. There's millions of crimes. So which one is the fit penalty for the fit crime? The only one who can do that is the Messiah. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else, uh, Tamara? <clears throat> That'd be all. You answer all my questions. Yeah. Well, you know, the Muslims, obviously, they are confused about who is the Messiah. And the question, even even why he is called the Messiah, they do not know. <laughs> what, the, what, what the Messiah mean, they don't know. Imagine one of one, one the Islamic tafsir says that the Messiah was called Messiah because he have a flat feet. <laughs> flat feet. I mean, how stupid this religion is, uh, how far it can go with the stupidity, it's, it's, it's beyond imagination. Yeah. Okay, okay, Tamara. Thank you very much for calling. We will take another person. You're welcome. Take care. Okay. Bye, bye bye. Bye. Yeah, the Messiah is a judge, and ruler. Let me see. I'm trying to find the hadith, so to put it in the screen. Hold on. <clears throat> Uh, and the funny that the messiah when he come he will have a cowboy fight i don't know what's wrong with this uh, website um, i cannot find the hadith here we go finally we found it it is within the screen it keeps saying uh, error error all right so the Messiah, he will come, and Muhammad, he swear, he took an oath, saying that the Messiah will come, and he will do, uh, he will be just judge, as you see in the screen. This is not my statement. In the same time, he will kill the pig. I mean, how silly. How silly. That the reason the Messiah is alive until now, and until Judgment Day, is to do three things. He will be judge, ruler, he will kill the pig. <laughs> Actually, this is what he do, and then he will not uh, 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 he will not collect money from the from the Christians because there is, the Muslims have too much money and nobody will take money if you throw it in the street. Uh, obviously, this is not this is false, because the more the population of a human being increase, the less the the more needs is exist need for water, need for food, need for resource. This is stupid. So Muhammad is have his own fiction stories, which, you know, getting him busted, as always. Okay, someone. Uh, this is my question. Somebody have a question, but he didn't want to call. Quran says Allah has, does not be got uh, in chapter 1, 12 verse. Okay. Uh, it calls someone something. Uh, yeah. Well, it, it, the word begot is not really what the Quran is saying. 
it says Allah did not give birth did not say uh, he, he, he won he is not he is not born or he let's say he is not born of something and he did not give birth so the Muslims when they translate you know it's kind of um, uh, funny translation um, let us go to the verse he is talking about before we take another person <clears throat> The funny, the Muslim, one of the Muslims, he was making a video to refute me supposedly. He said, Allah is Samad, that means he have no physical body. That is stupid of you. Samad is, a, is coming from the word Masmuda, which means collection. You know, there's like a little uh, container, have a hole in it, and kids, they put their coins in it. This is called Masmuda. So Allah is Samad, Allah is the collector. He is a collector. Those idiots, they don't even know what it means. So look, they say Allah is the eternal absolute. The word the summit have nothing to do with eternal, have nothing to do with absolute. Uh, say he is one of, which means Allah is a collector of the gods, and he is one of the gods. So he is the one who unify gods. That's why it says Ahad, not ah, oh, ah, Wahid. Let us see someone else's uh, texting. I'm wondering if you are Hafiz for the Quran, which means I can recite the Quran by heart. No, I don't do that. But I can, let us say, I memorize, you know, but not uh, recite. I mean, I'm not stupid to do that, my friend. You see, when you when you memorize a book and the book is silly and stupid, uh, that's not smart of you. You have to focus. My focus is understanding what the Quran and knowing what the Quran teach. So. I know what the verse says, but I'm not going to recite the whole chapter. There is no need. Uh, this was a question from somebody. Uh, here a person. Okay, he's trying to call. Let us see. Hello? Hello? Hang on, I just got to turn it down. Can you turn? How are you today? I'm fine, my friend. Can you turn YouTube, please, down? Yeah, I'll just gotta. I'll just turn it off. Here. All right. I just wanted to say thank you for everything you've done. You, you're really clever at how you promote how to unfold what is in the book and and to present it to people so they know the the true um, understanding of it. Well, I, you know, there's no yeah. need to thank me. I'm doing my duty. I mean, isn't it our, our duty to, to share the truth? Well, that's, you know, because it, it makes, because where I'm from, where I grew up, the, they've always got people calling everyone Islamophobic, and it doesn't give the truth of, of what it is, and they just um, misguide themselves and walk around it, and it, it, it sort of doesn't help society go forward. Yeah, well, you know, Islam is a is a collection of uh, a collection of of stories. Islam is not really a religion. Islam is a collection of religions. You know, many believes like you don't even know what Muhammad is. Is he a Hindu? Is he a Buddha? Is he a Christian? Is he a Jew? Is he is a, is he a black stone worshiper? What he is? So Islam is not really a religion by itself. Islam is a fabricated fraud man. Who's trying to create a religion? And, and I can prove it for you easy. Let us say uh, you are a prophet. Should should your should your God teach you what is right, what's wrong, or not? He should, right? Of course. Okay. Uh, of course. He so should. okay. Of course he should. So when Muhammad he started fasting, why Muhammad he was fasting a fasting which has not been ordered to him by God? As an example, uh, Muhammad he fasted something called the Ashura. The Hadith says, and this is uh, uh, Aisha and other they say, that Ashura was a fasting for the pagan Arab. Okay. Why Muhammad, he copied Ashura from the pagan Arab? Different Hadith says that Muhammad, he saw a bunch of Jews and he, he found them fasting. And he said to them, what this fasting is about? They said this is about Moses when he crossed the sea. 
he said well I am more close like uh, uh, Moses is more close to me from you and he start fasting the fast of the Jews which mean it is not his God ordering him to fast it was him liking the idea that as long this is a fasting about Moses I will fast about Moses so yeah, well, that, that, that's, that's just what it, that's what it just comes across because when I started to read the book they used to say oh you don't um, you don't know Arabic so you don't understand it and then I would say well why is it your scholars who are the ones writing it to what mislead people like that just makes no sense yeah. like why is other Arab ones who are the scholars who write it misleading people and they're wrong if they translate it but doesn't God know everything my friend the Arab who speak Arabic, Arab who speak Arabic, didn't agree about the Quran meaning because the Quran is a stupid book. There's nothing there. So if you go and read the interpretation for the same verse, which is in Arabic, and you see the interpretation for the scholars, you will see everyone giving you different interpretation. Why? Because they don't know what this Quran is talking about. The Quran is, is not a book. Quran is this guy. He was a madman. He suddenly he says something and then and then when they ask him they say I don't know ask, don't ask me he don't know like if we ask the Muslims okay in the Quran it says the word Israel who is Israel yeah shouldn't you yeah, tell me who is Israel? Right. who is Israel we do not know Israel okay the Messiah what is the word Messiah mean nowhere in the Quran okay so why Israel his name is Israel what happened his name is supposed he was Yaqub you know in our in, 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 in like how the name uh, became became Israel. You don't know no, um, Be because yeah, because the sorry. Quran is a collection of, uh, of of stories, and those stories are not the stories of Muhammad. Well, what I found interesting when I tried to read it is that the stories don't finish; they are all over the place, and it's sort of like, well, if the, this is a book from God, why is it so poorly written? And this makes no sense. I, yeah. I, I just can't if it's from God he's perfect so why is your book not perfect that's just that, that's just well, my it's not, you know the, no the Quran is not only not perfect there's nothing perfect in the Quran I mean name for me one chapter in the Quran is not a stupid just one actually here we go we have almost I, I can't because I, I, I can't read something that is poorly written it's just like this is not from god because it's just poor yeah exactly the, the quran every every single verse in it is stupid and we can we can show how stupid it is so uh, here we go we have muslims are listening we have almost uh, 800 people watching i encourage any muslim to call me right now and give me one chapter makes sense just one and give me the well, that's, like how that's how i had to, i had to buy your book so i could understand it yeah, because your books explained it. Because it was just like I'm having trouble reading this. So I was reading <laughs> Quran. I go, well, I bought your book so I could understand. And I'm like, oh, this is what they're trying to say, but it's just, it's just, just, just poor, just very poor. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for uh, for calling, my friend. Anything else you want to share? No, oh, no. God bless you. I'm just very happy that you know you you've helped me with a lot. So thank you very much. God, God bless you. Thank you, thank you, my friend. You're welcome. God enjoy bless. your enjoy your day. Thank you. God bless. Take care. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. You know, the Muslims are very confused about everything. Like we mentioned Israel. Who was Israel? Everyone of them, he give you different ideas. You believe it or not? They don't know. <laughs> they have no idea. What Maryam mean? They don't know. Why she is called Maryam? They don't know. What Abraham mean? They don't know. What Moses mean? They don't know. Why Jibril? His name is Jibril. What Jibril mean? They don't know. Why? Because Islam is a theft. How you can understand religion if you can't understand even the names and why they are mentioned? Ishmael. What Ishmael mean? They don't know. Because all those names are stolen stories. When you read the Bible, you will find out easy that this is not even a name. Abraham is not a name. Abraham is a, a, a description of what this man did. The one who crossed the river. The one who crossed from the other side. Abraham. Every name is a story. There's no names. This is why Muhammad, when he speak about the Pharaoh, 
he, he think Pharaoh is the name of the guy. To the point he says, Al Pharaoh. The word Al in Arabic mean like last the last name. The last name of this man is etc. So your name is Johnson, Alu Johnson. You know, your last name is Johnson, Alu Johnson. So you will see the Quran is speaking about Al, Alu Ibrahim. Look here. فَقَدْ أَتَيْنَا آلَ إِبْرَاهِيمَ Okay, what Allah mean? Translation, chapter 4, verse number 54. Okay. The people of Abraham. Who is the people of Abraham? How you can, how you say Alu Ibrahim, Alu Ibrahim, this is false translation. Alu Ibrahim is the family of Ibrahim, not just the people. Okay. Now, Alu Pharaoh. Okay, who is who is Pharaoh? This guy, his name is Pharaoh. Which Pharaoh? There's many Pharaoh. Alu <laughs> Pharaoh. Change the translation or translator. Let us see. Uh, just for a fun, for a, for fun. Hmm. What Alu Pharaoh? All the names mentioned in the Quran, there is no dating, there is no name. Like the Bible speaks about who is the one, the king we are talking about. This Pharaoh. Here we do not know who this guy was. When Moses was exist? When Israel was exist? Who is David? What, what David mean? What Suleiman mean? So, because the nature of the Quran is a collection of stories by others, like, oh, children of Israel, okay, shouldn't you tell us first who is this guy, his name is Israel? Imagine this book keeps saying, children of Israel, once after once after once. Where in the Quran we find the introduction for this person who his name is a is Israel and his is the children's is called children of Israel. Who is he? There is no there is no introduction. Well, if you go in the Bible, you will see details and the story how this person, what his name, what his name become. So, Muhammad is just a liar, a thief. He collects stories as an example. Not necessarily, not limited to this. If you go to the chapter of Al Kahf, the story of the ant. Hmm? We have somebody trying to call. Okay. Hello? Hello? Yes. Um, I'm fine. Um, uh, go ahead, your life on air. Yes, uh, my question was about uh, two chapters of the Quran. I don't remember exactly which one are there, but uh, there was one that said that uh, if Muhammad was asking questions, he should ask the Jews and the Christian, right? Yeah, in Kunta Fushakim in America, yeah. Okay, so uh, there's also like the Muslim will say that oh no, the, the Bible was corrupted, but at the same time, he says like to go to the Christian and the Jews. Um, is there any way in the in the Quran that says that the Bible was corrupted? Is like an invention for the Muslims? No, you see the Quran says, uh, <laughs> which means those. If you go and read the interpretation, this is supposedly about a Jew who he put his finger in the top of a verse in the Bible, so they will not be able to read it. They did not corrupt okay. the Bible. No. So this is the interpretation even of the Muslims. So there is nowhere in the Quran it says that they are changing the Bible. It's about a guy, supposedly. They were uh, they, they, they asked Muhammad about uh, the punishment of adultery. And uh, the yes. guy, he, he, he put his fingers over the verse where it says that the one who commit adultery, he should be stoned. This is what is the, 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 the Quran speak of, you know? Okay, so it's so it's so lies then. Okay. Yeah. Same time, the Quran have many verses. 
uh, uh, additional to the verse you mentioned, like in chapter 10, verse 94, uh, if you, Muhammad, if you have a doubt concerning which we revealed into yes. you, go and ask people who read the Torah and the gospel. And then if those people are corrupt people, how you can ask them? I mean, they are corrupt. You see, You're right. when, You're you, right. when you ask an adv uh, for advice, you ask for advice for someone is wiser and decent, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, if they are corrupting and if they are following uh, uh, following false teaching, that means they lost yes. their decencies and they are uh, not wise, because the one who yes. who corrupt his own book is foolish, and the one who follow wrong teaching is foolish too. So why he is yes. asking him to go and ask the Christians? In the same time, if you go in the Quran, you will find many verses uh, saying that he, you know, confirming what he, what they have, what he, like Muhammad is coming, and he confirm what they have with them. You know, confirming what they have with them. Okay, the, yeah. chapter two, verse number eighty-nine it says, and when there is come to them, which means the Jews, a book, which is the Quran from Allah confirming what is with them do you see it in the screen i don't know if you can see if you have a delay uh no, no i can because i'm using my phone all right so confirming what is with them so how the muslim they say the bible is corrupt if he is confirming what is with them what is with exactly. them you see some translation to try to fool you says what was with them no it doesn't say that Lima ma'ahum. the arabic is so clear and even here the muslim translation saying it clearly confirming what is with them Number two, yeah, but, how the Christians I'm can sorry. how the Christians can change the Bible? I mean, like, is it is it uh, one person in the world in control? I mean, there is there is the, the Bible is printed even in India. You know, there is disciple went everywhere in the world. So yeah, they, so they went exactly, to Africa. So if there were like different Bible, right? So in different so because... not only that in different languages, not only in many Bible in different languages. You know. So which one they were yes. corrupt and same time why the Christian did not accuse the Jews of a change in the Bible? Right. You know, right. Let, let us say the Jews corrupted the Bible, the Torah. Okay. How come the Christian did not notice that? And why in the world anyway a Jew would do that? I mean, this is a stupid idea. Right. If somebody is a believer in his belief, in his God, so he pray, he became a rabbi, he grew a beard, and then he corrupt the book. I mean, this is stupid. <laughs> This is this is a little bit stupid. You're right, you're right. It's like saying to a Muslim, you change your book. This is stupid too, because I mean, why you want to do that? Hey, you know what? I just thought about that. Uh the thing you said about the Jews, why they would like change the, their Bible. When you think about it, it would be extremely stupid because why what reason they would do that, right? Because the Jews were all living in Israel at that time. I mean before before Muhammad, so they would have no reason to change the Bible. If there were no any pagan around, right? Yeah, extremely stupid. No, because there's no reason because they believe the religion. Look, I want to show you something just for fun. Maybe you would not mention uh, 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 the Muhammad. He told them that the Jews they hate Jibril, they hate Gabriel. Okay. Okay, Muslims. Where we can find in the Bible that the Jews they hate Gabriel? How, how in the word Muhammad he says such a lie? I mean, you have to be donkey to say such a donkey statement. Because what, this is an angel of God, approved by the Jews. And Muhammad even, he took the name from the Jews. He do not even know what the name means. This is a, this is in the Hebrew language. So why the Jews, they hate Jibreel? Give us a reason. Who is a Muslim? Tell us. Why? He ate, he ate their yummy? <laughs> what he did? This guy, he plays soccer and he joined the wrong team. You, you know? know that, just that phrase proved that you really Satan because, yes, the Jews hate Satan. They don't, they don't hate any angel of God except Satan. Yeah. Well, uh, <laughs> but but why the Jews? They hate, give us a reason. Why? They, they, okay, what is behind the story? Let us say for the sake of argument. Uh, the Jews, they hate Gabriel or Gabriel. Why? Yeah. Why? Why? Where, where, where the story is coming from? Where Muhammad he got this from? No, no explanation. You know, no explanation. Yeah. Muhammad is is like a guy who ate uh, uh, like a bad ice cream, poison food, and he have a diarrhea. And whatever <laughs> whatever he go, he do poo poo, and people walking behind, and there is a lot of wind. Yeah. You know? <laughs> yeah. This is. is that, that's what we call uh, anti-Semitism, right? Uh, they just hate the Jews for for no reason. 
Well, you know, uh, uh, even if you give a reason, you have to give like the Jews, they hear Gabriel, but why? Why Why Gabriel exactly? What he did? So then, and, and here you should ask yourself, why the Muslim did not ask Muhammad? Why? If we go in the Hadith, look, let me show you. Let me say you find the Hadith for that. Uh, uh, here, and this is Sahih al-Bukhari. Uh, yes. It says... Uh, a guy he came to him and he asked him three questions and supposedly nobody knows him except a prophet and the story is hilarious because the guy who told Muhammad nobody knows the story except a prophet he himself he knew the answer which means he's a prophet he's a prophet too you know what I mean like if you imagine you come to me you call me you say CP I will ask you three questions and nobody knows the answer for them except a prophet all right and then yes. I give you the answers and you say you are right, I, you know, this is true. That's mean you know the answer too. Yeah, you're right, because how do you know that? That's mean you are a prophet. I mean, the stupid of donkeys. And look here it says. <laughs> so they ask him, what is the first meal? Like, what is the first uh, portent of the hour? What is the, look, look how serious the question. What is the first meal in the, in the, in the judgment day? And then, uh, in the paradise, sorry. And what makes the baby look like the father? And here they're giving the answer. And look what Muhammad said. The prophet said, just now. Just now, Jibreel has informed me about that. Abdullah, he said, Jibreel, the prophet said, yes. Abdullah said, he is among the angels, is the enemy of the Jews. <laughs> Muslims, why the Jews, they hate this Jibreel? And then Muhammad, he gave us his intelligence and he said, what resembled the baby? He said, if the baby, if the woman, if the man have discharged first, read with me, and if the man discharged proceed of the women, then the child resembled the father. And this is who told him that? Jibreel. This is why if I get married, I will never have discharged first. I don't want my son to look like me. That's disgusting. You know? Uh, you, you know, every time I read the, the Hadith and sometimes the Quran, uh, I have the feeling like Muhammad was trying to make fun of the Muslims or, I don't know, it's so silly that no one can see that kind of stuff and, you know, have a straight face. Is it possible? You must be, like, making fun of, of me if you're saying that to myself, right? Mm. Well, because there's so many stupid stuff in the Quran and the Hadith, so it's so amazing. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, uh, we laugh and the Muslims have no answers. And the funny, the Muslims, they, uh, they say we refute him. Refute me, here we go. Yeah, no, <laughs> me, me, job. Me, me, job. Yeah, me, 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 fufu. All right, my friend. Anything else you want to say? No, I have a nice one, my friend. All right, thank you. Thank you very much and God bless you. You too. Bye-bye. Yeah, actually, it's good to, to, to hear from, you know, wonderful Christians. You know to hear their opinion and what they like to say and to share with us I have a question about why Christ come for the Jews while they already do all been told by God in the Torah I'm not sure what you mean while they already do all been told by God well you see uh, being a Jew does not mean it's you are saved See, uh, uh, the Jews, they, uh, uh, first of all, they are the only one who worship the true God. So it's very normal for the Messiah, who the Jews are waiting for him anyway. They are promised. They've been taught about him. So he will come and he will be of the Jews. So he come to the Jews for many reasons. Number one, those are the people who choose him, which means they choose to worship the true God. And he is the one who chose them to come to them, through them. Secondly, the Jews are not saved unless they have the correct... Uh, just, just give me a second, please. I will call you back. Let me answer this person. I will call you back. The one I hang up on you. So the Messiah, he come for the Jews for a very simple reason. First, it's time for him to come. Secondly, he will come through who? Those are the people who believe in him. Those are the people who, they, who are waiting for him. And those are the people who he promised they would come to them. So why he will not? So you will see that all the stories, like when Jesus said that Abraham, he saw my day, and he rejoiced for seeing it. Abraham is not a stranger. Abraham is the grandfather of the Jews. 
So this is a family who decide to believe in God out of all the world. When everybody was worshiping idols, everybody worshiping rocks and stones, this family and this man and his wife and his family after him, they decide to follow the true God. So it's very normal for the Messiah to come. Now, the Jews, they've been taught everything in the Torah, including that the Messiah will come. So if you are talking about why the Messiah he came, because in the Torah still saying to them that the Messiah will come. And until now, actually, there's many Jews are waiting for the Messiah to come. So he come to them first because he promised them. Secondly, to explain to them many things they have wrong. As an example, the Jews, they've been given orders to observe like Sabbath. The Messiah, he said to them, Sabbath was made for the man, not the man was made for Sabbath, which means the Jews, they have a wrong understanding of their own scriptures for a long time. It been said to you, but I say to you. So they have a statement said to them, but they have wrong understanding. The same when they went after the women to stone her. He said to them, well, if one of you, he have no sin, stone her. Which means you are a bunch of hypocrites going after this poor woman. So the coming of the Messiah is to fill a fill, as he said, to complete. It's not completed yet. Same time to bring salvation for mankind, all mankind, not only the Jews. So he come to through the Jews, but he's not only coming to the Jews, he's coming for all mankind. This is why he, have, he said they have sheep out of this. This is why he said, I am not of this world. I am from above. So he came through the Jews for he promised the Jews and the Jews waiting for him. In the same time, he is coming not only for the Jews, he's coming for all of us to bring salvation. All right. Let us see the person who is trying to call. I will call you back. Okay. Hello? Please mute, mute YouTube, mute YouTube before you call me. Mute YouTube before you call me, please. Okay, I have to hang up. Before anyone call, call me or talk to me, mute YouTube. Before you answer Skype, if I am calling you, be sure you mute YouTube, then take the call. All right, hello? Yes, my friend. Go ahead. You are live on air. <clears throat> yes, hi. Uh, it's me again. It's me. It's Sundar from Nepal. Hey, my friend. How are you? Nepal. That's wonderful. How is Nepal going? How is life there? Well, it, uh, it's, it's still the same, you know. Yeah, okay. But I'm fine. Thank you for asking. Yeah, I remember you. You are, the, you are the person who became a Christian from Nepal, right? Well, um, yes. I, I, I'm well, like a... Uh, what, uh, like yes, I, I you can say that. I would like to say that. Uh, yes, I'm a from, uh, Christian from Nepal. All right. Okay. What, what do you like to say to us, my friend? Go ahead. Well, uh, I have one of these things going on in my mind a long time already, because you know this. Uh, the Muslims they already all, always say that uh, uh, how can they kill? How can God can kill his son? Like Jesus was not the one who was crucified. Mm. Uh, why would God punish his own son by crucifying and killing him in the cross, right? Mm -hmm. So, but but as, as you are the more expert for expert already, I would like to know. I lost you. Yeah, he have a bad internet. All right, I will answer your question. First of all, who said that God, he killed his son? Who said that? Where it says that? Where in the Bible it says that God, he killed his son? That is a stupid lie. Go ahead. Hello, I'm sorry. Yeah, it's okay. We, lo we lost you. Go ahead. Continue. Yeah, and uh, my point is, like, do they believe that... Uh, Jesus was whipped and he was hit and uh, he was scolded by the Jews and uh, he was put the, the, the throne was uh, kept on his head and he was brutally beaten by the soldiers and even the people and he was like uh, he carried the crosses all the way to the Golgotha uh, Calvary 
And do they all all these movies they believe uh, this one or they just want to stick with that they, they just no the, the, no the, 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 the Muhammadan they believe that the Messiah never been crucified all those stories not exist for them however yeah. uh, uh, their reasoning is beating them not for their benefit because uh, you just say the Muslim they say to you how God he killed his son right yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. They, they have always, always this claim that how can God punish His son? Like, okay, hold on. If God is, is so lovable, All right. why would He punish His son for right. us? Okay, we will go and use their logic. Always use their logic so we can laugh. Always use their logic because it's stupid logic. If Jesus cannot be God, for if He is God, His Father will not let Him be killed. Correct. That's what they are saying to you. How yes. God can kill His son? Well, in Islam, Jesus was not killed. That's mean God He saved His son. <laughs> yes, yes, right? yes. That, same that, time, well, same yeah. time. This is how stupid the logic is. Why Allah, if mm -hmm. He is, if He is the God of Isa, why He saved mm -hmm. Isa, but He did not save Muhammad? Muhammad he died because of a poison. Yeah, he, why? He didn't save Muhammad, right. Yeah. Why Allah did not uh, save Muhammad, but He saved Jesus? Any Muslim have an answer? Why Allah he hate Muhammad and he loved Jesus? The life of Jesus is more priceless to Allah more than Muhammad. Okay, it's okay. Don't don't, don't call me back. It's okay, my friend. You're in the, I got your question. That's it. Uh, <clears throat> I don't even see the caller. I don't know where the Skype is funny. Where is the caller? You don't appear for me in the screen. I see somebody is calling, but I don't. No, no, don't, don't call me, uh, Sandra, my friend. I just I got your question. No problem. No need to call back. So, if Jesus cannot, if he is, if their logic, if Jesus is a son of God, there is no way his father will kill him. Okay, I will go with your logic. Well, that's mean Jesus, son of God in Islam. This is number one. Proving that you are stupid in the way you think. You think. Secondly, where in the Bible it says that God, he killed his son? That's stupid of you. Jesus said, nobody can take myself, but I lay down myself by my willingly. Only me, I can, I lay down myself. And God knowing about what the Jews will do doesn't mean that God, he killed Jesus. The father and the son. No, the Messiah, he knew even what they would do. He knew who was going to give him up. My friend, there is no need to call him again. That's it. I'm going to exit actually Skype because we have enough for today. Otherwise, this is endless. I apologize. Uh, what I in the Torah to the question of the Okay, Jew thought that the Messiah will come. Yeah, well, the, uh, you know, you see, uh, the Messiah, he, he taught, he caught, uh, there's many, you can go right now searching Google, Prophet Google, peace upon him, prophecies in the Old Testament about the Messiah. You will find in this. But one of them, which is Messiah, he caught for the Jews, he said, what do you say about Christ? They said he is the, uh, he is, uh, he is the son of David. He said, if he is a son of David, then why he call him God? Uh, and about the Messiah, uh, he will, you know, the, die. Uh, where in the Torah it says the Messiah he will not die? Nowhere. You see, when, the, when somebody give you a question, and the question is like to make it, uh, let us say, mission impossible. Can you show me where in the, where in the Torah it says he will die or not die? What, what, what they are talking about? So, the Muslim is excused only. I'm not going to believe whatever you're saying just because Muhammad he said he wasn't killed. But if you go in the Quran, you will find the Quran confirming the crucifixion of Jesus. How we can prove that? Read carefully with me. The Quran confirmed the crucifixion. But the Quran confirmed that there is someone look like Jesus. Do you see it? So, which mean 
the Bible is very accurate in the story because the witnesses they saw someone in the cross he looked exactly like Jesus he speak like Jesus he have the voice of Jesus and nobody can notice he's not Jesus for he is made by Allah resemble Jesus do you see the Quran so when a Muslim he says his stupid stories he is getting his God Allah busted spanking him in his bum for the Quran confirm that there was a crucifixion and the one who was in the cross he looked exactly like Jesus guys is, is that is it me saying that or this is what you see in the screen this is the Muslim translation now if we are there me and you all of us and we see someone look exactly like Jesus and then you ask me second day did Jesus was a crucified I would say yes correct because the true honest on honest witnesses is the one who say what they saw and the Quran witness that the Christian they saw someone look exactly like Jesus that's mean they are telling the truth who is the liar in this story Allah Allah is the cheater, the deceiver. He made them think this is Jesus, but it's not Jesus. So it's the fault of who? <laughs> Do you see how stupid the Quran is? This is an of officially a stupid book. This is a certified stupid book. Because if you make me see Isa in the cross, and, and what is the purpose of this? Ask yourself. You see, you have just... Uh, like try to focus and think deeply okay Allah want to save Jesus no problem do he need to do this in fact the Messiah already is taken up to heaven why he need this guy what this resemble Jesus for I mean what this is what this is the what this is for this is stupid and how many people in the world they resemble Isa To the point nobody noticed that this is not Isa. I mean, do you see how stupid the story? So this verse in the Quran confirm that they saw someone look exactly like Jesus. That means it is Jesus until you prove the opposite. Do you understand me? Do you understand guys the logic? Very this is very logical. As long as you agree that the one who was in the cross look exactly like Jesus, will you have to prove that this is not Jesus? Because now, until now, what we have from the Quran, it is Jesus. He looked like Jesus, so it's Jesus. Even his mother, she could not recognize that it's not him. So the Quran itself proved to us that the story in the Bible is true because the Bible is written by the witnesses who witnessed what happened to Jesus and the Quran says yes they saw that they saw someone look like Jesus but Allah is a liar my friend how I can even read what you are writing for me Omati God have I don't know what is that Indonesian language that's why I say uh, the Quran is a book written by a stupid idiot guy his name is not Muhammad his name is Qatham and by the way there's a Muslim he says to him uh, in the uh, where uh, it says that uh, Qatham was the uncle of Muhammad open Ibn Kathir you donkey I mean those who they are making videos to refute me they are donkeys certified donkeys Read your books. Actually, I'm insulting donkeys when I say donkey. The don donkeys are smart. And they are useful. Very useful animals. They don't they harm nobody. They are peaceful. And they are very useful. Right? Anyway, uh, we, we finished with the sky for today. And I want to say to you in a very simple words, Islam is the most stupid cult. And Islam itself 
prove itself to be stupid. Look, this is Isa, but not Isa. Huh? I'm getting dizzy now. So the one was on the cross is Isa, but it's not Isa. This is someone look like Isa. Aha! Uh -huh. He looked like Isa, brother. Yes, brother. And what is the proof of this story of a guy who came 600 years after Isa? Or you, I mean, by the way, who's Isa? I mean, even the name, we do not know where the name is coming from. This is Isa, never heard of. This guy, Muhammad, obviously, he had an accident. He was driving a Ferrari in a very high speed, and he hit the camel in front of him after they got oil in Saudi Arabia. And then he woke up. So now he, everything is mixed up. Yeshua became Isa. Jacob became Israel, but why he do not know? Abraham is the son of Azar, which is a stupid. Mary is the sister of Aaron. This is what happened to you when you drive and you have an accident. <laughs> right? And look here, it says, But Allah raised him to him with his body and soul. <laughs> okay, why Allah raised him to him? What is this? Did he finish his mission? Why Allah even sent Jesus? I mean, what does, according to Islam, Jesus, he did nothing. According to Islam, there's not even a single Christian. He believed in the true Christianity. That means Jesus' mission was a failure. Abraham was a failure. I mean, look at this stupid religion. The Muhammadan, they say, Allah, he sent 124,000 prophets. Only Muhammad book is saved. Right. My friend, what uh, what uh, the the state of Islam is gone? Don't you see? They have them. They have sixty thousand in jail. They don't know what to do with them. They are feeding them fraud. They are feeding them uh, rats and mice. The Kurdish in Syria and Iraq. What are you talking about? What the state of Islam is gone? Uh, and look just to show you how stupid this religion is the verse before it have nothing to do with the verse after it crazy cult Muhammad he came 600 years the funny uh, one of the videos a Muslim uh, a Muslim he left Islam in the video and uh, the, the guy who was trying to supposedly refute me he said look this guy he left Islam but there is no but CP did not provide any proof <laughs> I'm using their book and he admitted that there's no proof and where is the proof that this has happened you see in Islam, even if you bury, if you borrow ten dollars, you have to bring two witnesses. Where is the two witnesses that Isa was not in the cross? Just two witnesses. Muhammad was not in the time of this man Isa. We do not know even who is he. It's a diarrhea statement. From the Ria, the Ria prophet, <clears throat> a prophet who pee as a woman, a prophet who have no jealousy for his God. Anyway, today it's a Friday night. I'm losing my voice. I think we have enough time together to see. Thank, thank God, we did not lose the internet again. So. I hope we have a good time. I will try always every Friday to open my Skype for people to call so people they can call me and we can share together and I will do my best to answer you. All right. Uh, and uh, not prophet. God says 
to Abraham in the Quran, we have made you to the people an imam. You know, Don, you have no idea what are you talking about. The prophet are the imam. The prophets are the imam because when there is a prophet is exist, there is nobody can lead except him, for he is the imam. You are ignorant. You don't even know what the word imam mean. It is the one who lead the prayer, and if the prophet is exist, he is the highest between them, so he will lead. Ignorance. Anyway, uh, I want to I want to finish with this for today, and uh, I want to say uh, to the black dog. Well, I mean, look at this black dog. He is looking at the sky. Supposedly, Allah is up. Remember, Allah is up. <laughs> Allah, He come down every third part of the night. Uh, he is looking at the sky. He says, Allah, why? Why you say I'm black dog is a, is a devil? Why? Why you idiot? Why you say that the black dog is a devil? Give me a reason what I did to you. There is no way. A person he have little brain will say such a stupid statement. This man he copies stories from people who they are, you know, believe in fictions and legions, and they have a phobia from a black color. So a black animal is bad. Black dog is shaitan. Black bird is a is a shaitan. So Muhammad is one of this environment. He is a false fraud prophet. There is no way a true prophet will say such a statement. Look how beautiful this dog. He is the devil. He is the devil. You are the devil. You, Muhammad, is the devil. This is a very, very beautiful dog. Dogs are loyal. They protect you. They die for you. You see, even the aggressive dog, they protect their masters. They are loyal. They cry when you die. Go and see how many videos where dogs, they don't want to leave the grave of the owner, the, the one who owned them. His family go home, watch TV in the same night. They have their own dinner and they forget about him. Second day, the dog, he stay there a day after day after day and he will not leave. Who are you, Muhammad? You don't have the quality of a dog. You don't have the quality of a chicken and I can prove it from the hadith. Muhammad he said that if a chicken he if a rooster he would do cuckoo cuckoo that because he saw an angel and if a donkey he start making sound of a donkey that's mean he saw shaitan that's mean Muhammad he is not equal to a donkey and he don't have a qualification of any of them donkeys or a rooster because rooster he knew the angel Muhammad he saw the angel he asked his wife to do striptease for him so he can recognize him he told her I see him in the corner by the legs of by the legs and the thigh of Khadija, Muhammad he recognized that he is a prophet. While he confirmed that the donkey he knew, if it's an angel or shaitan, a rooster he knew that. So, those who hate dogs, mostly, especially if you hate them, I, I don't blame you if you get scared from a strange, I mean, a strange dog or etc. You know. But when you hate dogs just because of their kind, that's mean you have a phobia in the best scenario. And when you claim that a dog because of his color, he is the devil just because he's black, that means not only you have a phobia, that's mean you are mentally sick and you are racist. The black man is the one who destroyed the Kaaba. The most person who Allah hate is a black man, Muhammad said. Not a white man. What a filthy man. Thank you guys for being here. I I am really I appreciate all of you. And uh, I hope that Muslims will learn and Christians will learn and all of us will learn from each other. Life is a is a is a is a is a like a train of uh, with, with the stations of knowledge. So each time we stop in a station we should learn something otherwise why we are in this train life without you me as a human being the proof of my existence is my brain thinking learning otherwise what i am
so learning is great there's one thing only can grow with you knowledge the rest will not your youth will go your skin will have wrinkles your healthy body will demolish slowly like a candle but there's only one thing will grow with you that is knowledge and knowledge make you wise one of two things knowledge make of a person either make you evil or wise which mean using your knowledge to hurt people like Muhammad using false knowledge fraud fictions those are naive people fooling them with the black dog is the devil so he is using the knowledge of deceiving superstition stories using it against those naive right So I want to say thank you. May the Lord bless you. And until we see you again soon, Christ is Lord. And Muhammad gets spanked every day, every time we go live on air. And we'll go as much as we can. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye. And enjoy your weekend. Don't forget that. And by the way, again, I remind you to pray for our friend and anyone. The one from, uh, I think, Sri Lanka. He, he needs a job. He need to provide to his family please pray for him that the lord will open doors for him the lord will provide him pray for all the poor in the world that they will be given for their need they will be supported for the need support for you know we are christians we are a family pray for all poor not only christians muslims hindus everybody poor are beloved people by god but they need help so we pray that the lord he will open doors for them so they can provide for their family, for their children. They can live a decent life and nobody can take, you know, uh, uh, advantage of them. Uh, uh, and nobody can humiliate them. So they can be respected and live with dignity of a human being as a child of God, as God he wanted us to be. So we pray for this gentleman and we pray for everybody. We pray for all of you, your health. We pray that you stay stable with your mind. Because if we lose that mind, we lose everything. And we pray that all of us, we will have a good time for this weekend with our family, our friends, and do good wherever we are. Thank you, and God bless. Take care.